Welcome to the Awakening Podcast Network. Get ready for an inspiring audio from this cutting-edge voice. You can find more podcasts at awakeningpodcasts.com. A reset of the prophetic movement is upon us. The second wave of prophets is rising in this hour. We stand at the edge of a new era in the prophetic. We're gathering the international prophetic community at the Global Prophetic Center, a hub for prophetic training, prophetic labs, summits, networks, and lighthouses. It's time for prophets to go deeper. It's time for seers to soar. It's time for prophetic voices to rise up and decree what says the Spirit of God with accuracy that causes the world to pay attention. The Global Prophetic Center offers proven prophetic systems and structures to equip you to walk worthy of your calling and to prophesy with precision, boldness, diplomacy, and wisdom. Get hands-on training and mentoring in a safe environment that breeds true prophetic community and learning. Receive impartation and activation. Sharpen your gift and avoid prophetic pitfalls. Get commissioned. Get networked. Get sent out with the word of the Lord in your mouth and the confidence to release it. Begin your journey today by applying at globalpropheticcenter.com. 2,000 years ago, Jesus settled something in the heavens. He said in Matthew 28, verse 18, that all authority in heaven and in earth has been given unto him. And as a result of that, we can go forth and make disciples of nations. We can teach nations to observe everything that he's taught us. And so therefore, in Christ, we have authority. We can settle issues. And a lot of times, those issues are taken in a type of prayer accessing the courts of heaven. And today we have an expert in the field with us, Robert Henderson. And you have a brand new book out. This is your third, right? Yes, it is. This is your third. This is Receiving Healing from the Courts of Heaven. So in his previous books that you'll just want to go and find out more about them too. Uh, the first one was on the Courts of Heaven. Then the next one was... was Unlocking Destiny from the Courts. Unlocking Destiny from the Courts. This one is on healing. And yes. you're doing one on financial release oh, well, too. yes. Right? So this is going to be an exciting series, but we just want to encourage our viewers to get training in this area because it'll change the way that you intercede, where you can execute the justice of God based on his promises by faith. So we're going to talk about this book in a few moments. But just before uh, we started, uh, you know, producing this, you know, as we started getting ready to share, you were sharing with me a prophetic visitation you had from the Lord when you were in Ireland recently. And I want you to share it with our audience. Well, I would love to. I, I, as I was sharing with you just briefly, um, I had a dream while I was in Ireland and what I saw was I saw the uh, the game show Jeopardy, and I had to explain it to other people from other parts sure. of the world. But in America, we know the game show Jeopardy and how it all operates. And and in in this game show, we were they were in final Jeopardy. In the in in the game show Jeopardy, there's there's three rounds: Jeopardy, Double Jeopardy, and then Final Jeopardy. And whoever risks the most and gets the correct answer, they always usually win the show, win the game. Sure. And I saw that that there was this. We, we were in Final Jeopardy. And um, whoever risked the most actually won the game, if you will. And what I really sensed and understood in the dream, just explain it briefly. What I understood in the dream was that we were in a place of final jeopardy and that the word crisis uh, in our English language, it comes from the Latin language and it means dangerous opportunity. I love that. And that literally wow. God is moving us into a season of time. I believe mm-hmm. we're in a season of time with the 70 year history of Israel and all this kind of thing that we are in a season of time where that the decisions we make in this time will determine our future, will determine wow. where we go. Uh, and that it is a, that, that God is presenting us with dangerous opportunities. In other words, that yes, there's danger associated with it, right. but I can't so let the danger uh, persuade me, right. yes, that I don't take hold of the opportunity. And I was reminded of the children of Israel when they came to the board of Canaan. And literally they said there's, there's chariots of iron chariots, there's giants, there's yep. walled cities, and they let the danger 
danger of the situation caused them to miss the opportunity right. that God was presenting because them with. Because God had already told them that they would overcome and move in, that's right? right. So that's right. And they I was, didn't get the answer right. That's exactly right. They didn't get the answer right. right. And see, I, I believe that God is, we're literally moving into a season of time now where that there are things we've waited on, but it's going to take a realm of faith. We're going to have to sure. move in another dimension of faith that maybe we've been reluctant to in times gone by, or maybe we actually did, but it wasn't the right sure. season. But because it's final jeopardy, because this is the season, this is the time that when we take the step into it this time, just like Peter, he fished all night and caught nothing. But a few hours later, because the season had changed, he launched out of the deep and caught a catch. There you go. See, because because it's all about the season that yeah. we're in. And I realized in the dream when I had it that it was about the season that we were in and that if we would do maybe even things we've done before and got no results for, sure. that if we would do in them now season. in this yeah. season, it would produce great results. But I cannot let the failure of the past season Hold stop me yeah. from stepping into uh, this, this realm of faith in this season. Wow. Powerful word. And I believe that that is really speaking to some of you as individuals and you're thinking, oh my gosh, did I ever need that word right now? Uh, because that's exactly where I'm I'm, I'm at. And so some of you are being invited by God to take some big risks. He's going to love you the same, whether you take them or not. That's, that's right. That's not the issue. The issue is about fulfillment of, 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 of the full destiny plan that God has for your life. So um, bring that to the Lord. And if the shoe fits, wear That's it. That's right. You know, because this is not an opportunity that we're going to want to see slide by. Okay. Yeah. Well, receiving healing from the courts yes. of heaven. I'm so excited about this because um, many people are suffering with sickness and disease and they don't get healed right away. Mm. You know, the manifestation doesn't come. And sometimes years later and they're wondering why I thought I've done everything, but you've got keys in this book yes. to help, you know, people like you, if you fit that description, this book is going to help you. But before we um, go into all the intricacies of the healing aspect, could you give us a review mm -hmm of our access to the courts of heaven and our operations there. Yes. Well, I, of course, I understand that, there, that the heavenly realm is legal. And let me just say this. A lot of people have heard me teach on the courts of heaven throughout the course of years now. Um, but I've told them now, look, I'm not teaching you a method of praying. I'm teaching you how to enter a spiritual dimension. There you go. Sure. Because the courts of heaven is not a method. It's a spiritual right. dimension. And so we, by faith, step into that dimension. That's right. See, some people say, well, I don't have the gifts as necessary. And I say, you don't, you don't have yeah, to. No, you're a believer. So That's you right. That's right. First of all, you have more <laughs> gifts than you think you right. have. But, but, but secondly, whatever realm you function in prophetically, that is sufficient to step into this dimension. And so I encourage people to do this because that, this dimension called the court of heaven is, is a legal dimension. And the best way to explain it, I think, is out of 1 Peter 5, verse 8, where that Peter, as an apostle, said, Be sober, be vigilant for your adversary. And that is the Greek word antidekos, which means one who brings a lawsuit. It, is, it, it says that the devil is our legal opponent, sure. that he is going about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So the whole idea there is that the enemy cannot devour us except he has discovered a legal right to do it from. Right. And we step into the courts of heaven on one level and we remove his legal rights because of what the blood is, yeah. because of what the blood because says. Because of our covenant with Jesus. That's, that's right. Yeah. We, we take our position in the spirit dimension. I, I tell people, I said, the blood of Jesus repositioned us in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I've just become aware of this. Romans 5 verse 2, it says that we by faith, or it, it says that we have access by, by faith, faith into, into the grace, grace in which yeah. we stand. I mean, that's, that's a, an amazing very, statement. very, very powerful. Because it says we're standing in a spiritual place, but we still have to access it by faith. So we're not trying to get somewhere. Yeah. We're simply trying to access where we already are. Right. And that's the spirit dimension. That's one of these dimensions is the court of heaven. Right. And we have bold confidence that we can access the throne of grace. Absolutely. So we can stand in that grace and... And, and go for it. So Absolutely. I highly recommend getting his first book on the courts of heaven and um, because it's, it's so good. And even if some of it is repeated in this book a bit, just to give you a uh, reference to it, it's worth getting it in more and more. Every book has different 
different insights and revelation that's going to uh, help them. And especially for for intercessors, it's really good to know your position Absolutely. so that you can intercede with the skill of of this access, of knowing what your rights are, of knowing how to execute um, the justice of God. So share with us about the healing component of this and what God's been teaching you on well, this. Well, first of all, we, we began to move in healing really heavily like in 2000. Mm -hmm. I had a dream in, 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 in no I still remember, 19, uh, November of 1999, where God was in, in, uh, strongly pressing me to step into this realm. And so in 2000, we began to move, early 2000, we began to move in healing. We started seeing phenomenal things happen. But as great things were happening, suddenly my wife has a dream. And in the dream, the Lord tells her, she hears God's voice saying, tell Robert, if he does not pray for them correctly, they will die. And that just yeah. messed with me. I right. thought, what am I supposed to do with this? Yes, really. And I didn't know what to do with it. And so years Just a little later, bit of weight on your shoulders. Yes, it right? does. <laughs> and so, so years later, when the court of heaven teaching came, and I began to say, I, I, then I thought, that's what God was saying. That there, there's a legal dimension that, that literally, if I don't understand the legal realm, then I can be trying to get some people healed that there's something legally resisting them from getting the full benefit of everything Jesus died mm -hmm. for. And then I began to find it in the scripture. You know, for instance, in Luke chapter 13, this is the pro most prominent one. Luke 13, Jesus, it says, he sees the woman bent over. And when he sees her bent over, he says, woman, you are loosed. Yeah. Well, that is the Greek word apoluo, and it means to cancel a debt, to decree a divorce, or to, dis to dissolve a contract. That's so awesome. So Jesus legally set her free. And then it says he touched her. And she was made straight. But he had to deal with the legal issue, the legal so contract good. that the enemy had to hold her in that sickness. He had to undo it so that the anointing could have the effect. And I began so to realize, good. how many times have I prayed for people and they would physically feel the anointing, but they would still be sick? There we because go. there was something legal that was, that was resisting the anointing mm -hmm. from having the effect God des has designed it to have. And so when we move the legal thing out of the way, all of a sudden the healings start coming. Oh, I love and I that. just saw it happen in Ireland. I, I mean, we just, it, unbelievable <laughs> things started happening as we so dealt with beautiful. legal issues. Ladies coming out of wheelchairs, uh, a lady that was deaf in an ear since she was 11 years old was now 62. She had been hit by a car, flipped wow. upside down, hit her head. From that point on, she'd been deaf in her right ear. ear. Wow. When I dealt with the legal issue, her ear popped open after, love what, 51 it. years? And all of a sudden, she's able to hear, and she and everybody in the room is amazed, including me. Yeah. <laughs> I said, "This stuff actually works." Yes, it uh, actually I mean, does. It was, it, it, I mean, just a lot of, of neat and, and powerful things happening. Well, the Bible says you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. It will set you free. And th this is so exciting. In fact, I feel already that there are some of you that are being awakened. You're thinking, "Oh, wow, that's it." That's it. That's what I need. Tell me more. Can I really believe that a number of you are going to receive healing just because you're sitting under the truth of the word of God? So position yourself to receive that healing because these keys are going to help you. But Robert, um, I want to have you share a little bit on uh, about the trading floor. Okay. Okay. Making trades in heaven because in your first book and in the second, um, it is mentioned on, mm -hmm. on how the trading takes place and that. And I know that a lot of our viewers might have never heard of that before, but it would be good for you to to give some understanding on that. Yeah, because trading works both in the heavenly realm and on the demonic side. And so, for instance, in Ezekiel 28, 14 through 16, when, when Lucifer, we know he was Lucifer before he was thrown out of heaven, uh, the Bible says that he, that iniquity was found in him. So he was created perfect. Right, I mean, absolutely. that's the Bible. So God doesn't yeah. create anything that's yeah. not perfect. And so he was created perfect in all of his ways, but somehow or another, iniquity was found in his heart. And the Bible says that he, through the abundance of okay. his trading, uh, uh, there was violence found in him. And so you look at that, and when you read it, it sounds like that trading is bad. Okay, but what we have to understand is that if trading is bad, then the cross is bad. Right. Because when Jesus died on the cross, that was the he greatest traded. trade sure. of all. See, he, because 2 Corinthians 5.21 says that he became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. Uh, it says in he, uh, Isaiah 53, 4, he bore our sicknesses, carried away our pains. Right. So he, he gave us health in the place of sickness and disease. But then also 2 Corinthians 8, 9, 
It says that he became poor, poor that we might become rich. So the cross was a trade. Sure. And so, so if, if trading is wrong, then everything Jesus did would be wrong. So trading is actually a heavenly activity. When it says that he, that Satan or Lucifer at that time through the abundance of trading was filled with violence, it's because he traded with the wrong heart. Okay, so it wasn't it wasn't that trading so it was, was going wrong. on in heaven That's all right. along. That's right. Trading it is a heavenly activity. But he didn't watch his heart as he was trading, and through the abundance of that iniquity, that's right. Got that, in. That's right. And, the, and of course, Isaiah sixty one. This is what I love. It says he. We all know this. He gives us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy, uh, uh, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So all of that a trade, it's all obviously. Traits. And then yep. it says that we might become the trees of righteousness, the, the planting, planting of, of the Lord. Lord. So through trading, we actually are transformed. And I thought, well, what do I do? So often whenever I feel so weak, so powerless, so much of a failure, I mean, that we deal with our own stuff, then I come before the Lord and I pour all of that out and I receive sure. His abundance of grace. So See, good. what I've just done, I just made That's a trade. That's easy, isn't it? Yes, you I just say, made a trade Lord, I'm spirit. feeling weak today. I give you my weakness and I receive your strength. Yes, because it's a spiritual sure. reality. So I'm saying all, the, all that to say trading is a heavenly activity. So Satan traded, but he traded with an impure heart. That caused him, according to Ezekiel, to get thrown out of heaven. Okay, he understands the principle of trading. So when he comes, this is so, so powerful. So we already established that sure. the cross was, was the greatest trade. Okay, but what happened? In the garden, Satan comes to Adam and Eve, and he offers them something. And he gets them to take what he's offering, which is sin. And the moment he take, they take that, it gives him the right to take something from them. Mm -hmm. And they lost creation through a trade. Wow. See, see, they lost creation. This is so clear, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. So clear. They lost creation through a trade, but Jesus gained it back through another right. trade. So it's been gained back now. But they lost it. So that is the way Satan works. So here's what he does in regards to what we're talking about. Maybe in our bloodline, maybe in our own life, people make trades with Satan either knowingly or unknowingly. In fact, any time we're tempted, it's him trying to get us on his trading floor. Mm -hmm. And so when we give in, we run the risk of losing something precious wow. to us because we've just made a trade. Sure. It gives him the right to take something from right. us. And for some people, it's been health issues or, right. or something of that nature. Now, I'm not saying everybody that's sick or sin in their life. That's not what I'm saying. Sure. But, but sometimes... We see that, that that is the case from Scripture, and especially as it relates to us you or our bloodline. You want to get it checked out anyway, Absolutely. Right? I mean, we wouldn't want to be so proud to think, well, I would never have sin, so I'm That's not even exactly. going to go there. I mean, if I have anything at all. In fact, just recently, I was struggling with some health issues, and I went before the Lord, and I said, I, I need to know what, what's going on. Is there anything in me? And he said, there was trauma. There was trauma in your emotions a number of years ago, actually, mm -hmm. it was. And he showed me the situation. And he said, at that time, I let fear in. I let stress in. And I just kept going. But I didn't look after that. Mm -hmm. And so he, he had me go back. So it was like, it's true, like what you're saying. And it can be subtle. You might not even realize it at the time. You just have to keep surviving. So you go forward. But there can be those those things that get in there. And they... They can be easily reconciled you know, back. You're right? saying that, and it reminds me, years ago, this principle was out in operation, and I didn't realize it. There was this lady, a Baptist lady, that knew nothing about the things we're mm -hmm. talking about. And, uh, but she came, and she had been, been impacted by the ministry, and she had fibromyalgia. So she came to me, and she said, would you pray for me? So I began to pray for her. The moment I began to pray for her, the pain intensified to the point that mm. she was screaming in pain. And I stopped and I said, what's happening? And she said, she told me the pain's increasing. And I said, then that tells me this is not just a disease. This is demonic. I said, because it's fighting the anointing. Sure. And I said, when did this happen to you? And she said, several years ago, she said, my, my son-in-law was, was murdered, was viciously murdered. Wow. And the doctor told me that because of the stress I was under at that time, fibromyalgia had, devel had developed. And I looked at her and I said, well, that's not completely true. I said, the stress you were under actually allowed the enemy to take advantage of sure. you. What you're dealing with is a demonic thing here as a result of the stress you were under that, that somehow or another, it, it, there was some, there was a trade made. There was a legality. It was done. So anyway, what I did was I told her, she was a Baptist. And so I was trying to help her. I said, look, 
I'm about to rebuke this thing, and I may get loud because that's kind of me. I said, I may get loud. And I said, I'm not, I'm not angry at you. I'm just going to deal with this thing. So I took authority over that. Literally, the power of God hit her, picked her up off her feet, and threw her backwards. And when she got wow. up, she was running around the room completely wow. healed of fibromyalgia because of the stress and, and the trauma the root. issues. It was the root of that. Yes. Was, was back to that. I mean, because stress and anxiety, fear, it's sin. Yes. Anything that's not of faith is that's sin. That's good. So there Absolutely. could be lots of landing strips there. Absolutely. But the good news is... We can trade it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We come, and I think what we do is we come and we say, Lord, I'm just bringing this to, I'm bringing that stress. I'm bringing that trauma. I'm bringing this place of weakness that I'm in. Because, because it's, it, he sees very clear. He says, he says, in our weakness, he's made strong. Right so on. there's a trade that's made there. So I bring him my, I don't have to be, he's not going to reject me because of my weakness. He welcomes my weakness. Sure. And I can just come and lay that and say, now, Lord, I'm asking for your strength. I'm just making a trade with I you. I gladly give you my weakness. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I joyfully give you my weakness. Yeah, Paul yeah. said, I boast in yeah. my weakness. <laughs> right. I mean, it's an amazing because thing. Because in, in that weakness, his strength is made perfect. Absolutely. The Absolutely. trading floor, that's awesome. Um, okay, so let's let's go back specifically to the subject of healing okay. now. And we already covered a little bit about when people have long-term illnesses mm-hmm. and they're not... They're not, you know, they're not getting um, a manifestation of healing from the anointing. Then that's a really good clue is to mm-hmm. look further to see if there's any legal issues. Can you give us some more testimony or some more scripture references to build our faith on that? Oh, absolutely. See, we talked about the woman that was in that condition that was bent over for 18 years, and but but then we see the man let down through the roof. Right. Oh, uh, and when Jesus, when the, when the people tore the roof off, they let the man down. When Jesus saw their faith. He said, man, your sins are forgiven you. Well, he didn't come to get his sins forgiven. He came to get his body healed. Right. He was paralyzed. But, but Jesus, Jesus addressed that That's first. right. Jesus knew what he was doing. He knew that the man was in the condition because of the activity of sin mm-hmm. in his life. So when he said, your sins are forgiven you, well, forgiveness is a legal thing. Forgiveness is being freed from a debt. It's, re- it's being let go from, from an obligation we can't sure. pay. So, so he forgave him of his sins. And then he said, of course, they, they, they wondered, which I heard someone say one time. He said, they said, you know, where does this, who does this man think he is that he has the right to forgive sins? Only God can forgive sins. I heard someone say one time. I thought it was so powerful. He said 2,000 years ago, it says they, didn't, they had no problem believing Jesus could heal. They questioned whether you could forgive. Yeah. He said today... <laughs> Today we don't we don't question whether he can forgive. We wonder whether he can heal. Wow! Because and it's just been completely powerful. reversed. Wow. But but so they said. Well, who does he think he is? Well, to prove who he was, he said he said I say to you, take up your bed and walk. He but said, there were, your there, sins are forgiven. That's right, yeah. because he released him from the legal issue by forgiving him yeah. sin, so that when he proclaimed healing, he right. was able to receive it. Because the legal issue had been removed from him, Beautiful. and then of course in 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 John five fourteen, there's another scripture where that uh, Jesus goes to the man at the pool of Bethesda, and he says, "Do you want to be made well?" Well, he's been this guy's been in this Come condition for thirty eight years. He's pushing in for thirty eight yes, years. Yes, thirty eight years. years. <laughs> and so Jesus said, "Do you want to be made well?" Well, that was a strategic question because sure. when somebody's been sick for that long, right. it's really easy to get your identity in that That's sickness. True. That you just, yeah. you're just, you're just, you don't know who you are outside yeah. of it. And so he said, do you want to be made healed? Well, the interesting thing was the man said, well, I don't have anybody to put me in the water mm-hmm. when it stirred. And I, I often say he was answering a question Jesus wasn't asking. Right. And, and, but, but, but Jesus basically said, take up your bed and walk. Well, when he, after he's healed in, in John five fourteen, he finds him in the temple and I thought that's so significant. No yes, he says, sin no more lest a worse Worst thing, thing come you. on you. Mm-hmm. So in other words, he's saying the reason you were in that condition is because of some sin. Don't go back to that thing mm-hmm. because it's going to give the enemy a legal right to visit you with right. something worse. And I don't know what but could be Jesus worse than 38. Jesus gave him the trading. That's you right. Know, he traded and then he said, no, this is your key. And that's your key right now too is that we want to watch over our soul with all diligence because from, from 
our soul comes the issues of life, the choices that we make. And so often sin can be subtle. You know, we don't have to get all sin conscious and be looking for everything wrong. But if you're seeing the fruit, Jesus said, if there's if there's a bad fruit, there's a bad root somewhere. So we simply, without condemnation or anything like that, we go and ask the Lord, what is the root of this? Is there something that is, is, is causing this? And then we can go with absolute authority to the courts of heaven uh, where Jesus, you know, J- Jesus settled the issue and traded off. The blood's already your verdict. Your forgiveness is already your verdict. And then that trade can be made. I know that many of you are getting healings right now. I want to encourage you to get this book. Just go on Amazon right now and get it. Or you can go uh, to Robert Henderson's website. And uh, that's on your screen right now. And get it there as well as other teachings he has uh, that you would be so amazed at. I really want to encourage you to go. But Receiving Healing from the Courts of Heaven by Robert Henderson. Uh, We really encourage you to get that. Thank you so much for joining us on today's program. I just want to encourage you to go to patriciaking.com for some more information on the ministry. And there's so much available to you there, our events and our resource and partnership. It's, it's, it's a place where you will want to peruse that site. Um, but also, I want you to remember this, that God loves you with an everlasting love. He loves you into healing. He loves you into deliverance. He loves you into freedom. So go and tell the world about that love because there's people waiting right now for you to let them know. We'll see you next time. You have gifts. God expects you to use them. If you need training to school your gift, log on to schoolofthespirit.tv. You'll find training in spiritual warfare, prophetic ministry, prayer, seers ministry, writing, and so much more. Go to schoolofthespirit.tv today. You want to go deeper? Get equipped to overcome and walk in God's purpose for your life at Awakening House of Prayer's online campus. You'll experience an online family, preaching, teaching, and prophetic impartation for victorious living. We have over a thousand members online hungry for what God is saying and doing in the earth. Visit ahop.online today and join our family. This has been a production of the Awakening Podcast Network. Jennifer LeClaire is the founder and owner of APN. Our heart is to inspire people and exalt Jesus with every broadcast. We're grateful for our advertisers and supporters that make these podcasts possible.